Okay, last one up for the pro side is Robin Yoshida. All right, my presentation is about cloning extinct species and endangered species. Um, in the far, far future, maybe extinction will be a thing of the past. Um, the idea of cloning extinct species started with a novel, which is a science fiction novel in the 1990s called Jurassic Park. Some of you may have seen the movie, but it was about a team of scientists who extracted DNA from fossilized mosquitoes and um, ended up bringing a whole race of dinosaurs back. Um, since that novel, some, of the, some scientists have been making it their goal to bring dinosaurs back from extinction and make science fiction into a reality. Um, 35,000 years ago, um, mammoths started walking the earth. Uh, 20,000 years ago, humans started walking the earth and um, ended up hunting all the mammoths to extinction. Um, along with that, 20,000 species of birds have been extinct due to humans since human um, civilization. And 60 different mussel and fish species have also become extinct. Um, the rate of extinction is 100 to 1,000 times greater than the normal, and all this information is from a, Dr. Levin, who wrote an article in American Science Magazine, and he said that the rate of extinction is so high that we're going into the sixth wave of destruction, and there's only been five others before, and um, so hopefully cloning will be something that will stop this wave of destruction. The process to, um, to clone an extinct animal is kind of a hard process, but there is a way to do it. Um, first of all, it may seem easy to, in Jurassic Park where they extracted the DNA from the mosquitoes, but in real life that's, that wouldn't really work because the DNA you extract from, from the mosquito would actually be the DNA of the mosquito and not the dinosaur. Um, so instead of do this process, first we have to recover DNA. Um, from like thousands of years ago, which is a hard thing to do because DNA is found in things like bones, teeth, tissue, and um, all that stuff is fossilized and through the fossilization process things tend to break down. So it's hard to find DNA that is in good enough shape and, um, and is unfragmented enough that we can sequence it with another um, animal to clone it. Um, the next step is to reassemble, if you find DNA, the next step is to reassemble the genome. And to do that, you have to have, um, you have to find a living species that has related characteristics to the extinct species. Like if we were going to clone a mammoth, we would probably use an elephant because they're of related um, characteristics. And you would reassemble the, the mammoth <coughs> genome with the, um, the elephant's genome and until um, it's unfragmented and in good enough use to clone it. Um, the next step is to trigger cell division, and by that we use either chemical injections or um, electric, th electric shock. And once, um, once the cells start dividing, the genome is placed into, oh, wait, so uh, when, we, when we put the egg, we put the egg into, we, no, we put the nucleus into the egg of the living animal and then we trigger cell division. And then once the cell is divided, we put the egg into the living animal, into the living animal, and which acts as a surrogate mother, then gives birth to the extinct species, and um, hopefully the genetic traits from the living animal gets passed on to the new animal. Uh, okay. Um, the first, extinct clone brought back to life was the Ibex, the Ibex in 2009, who had been extinct um, for many years, and DNA was found in 2003. Um, even though this was a huge success for scientists, it, the scientists didn't get the hopes up of the public to make them think that soon dinosaurs would be back walking the earth, but um, they knew it was a big step, and um, more research continued and 
Um, some, say, some scientists believe that the Tasmanian tiger, which went extinct um, 84 years ago, or well, will, re will be repopulated 84 years after extinction in 2020. Um, in terms of con conservation, there is a new thing um, San Diego Zoo of Institute, San Diego Institute of Conservation, which is called Frozen Zoo, and it's basically where they have taken DNA um, such as embryos, oocytes, ova, blood, tissue, semen, and they have frozen it and kept it in this thing called a frozen zoo. And they have oh, they have over 8,400 species there in case the species becomes to go like becomes endangered and they might need the DNA to like, either bring the, the species back or, um, or to just like conserve their DNA just in case for scientific reasons. Um, and all of, these, all of these new technologies will hopefully make um, mass extinction, hopefully prevent mass extinction again. Um, In conclusion, there's there's many barriers that, have, that are involved in this process, and through more and more research, then hopefully the barriers will be breaking down, um, and maybe um, extinction, uh, maybe dinosaurs will be back to like be back in the um, be repopulated um, in many years. But um, the main goal is to prevent another mass extinction from happening, and all the species that have been dying out. Hopefully we can, like, <laughs> hopefully we can um, cut down the number of species that have become extinct.